Good morning. Today is Friday, August 5th, 2022. I have two pieces to share with you this morning. I suspect that each of the writers I will quote would be shocked by the other one and the fact that I am putting the two of them together. Nonetheless, I feel that these two pieces taken together meaningfully encompass the complexity of this special Shabbos, which we discussed last night, and Tisha B'Av, with all of the irony and range of emotions from down to up to down to up that these days hold. First, I want to share with you words from Zev Jabotinsky, the great Zionist leader this is from a speech that he made in Warsaw on Tisha B'Av itself in 1938, just about a year before the Nazi invasion of Poland. He said as follows, it is for three years that I have been calling on you Jews of Poland, the glory of world Jewry with an appeal I have been ceaselessly warning you that the catastrophe is coming closer. My hair has turned white and I have aged in these years because my heart is bleeding. For you, my dear sisters and brothers, do not see the volcano, which will soon begin to spurt out the fire of destruction. I see a terrifying sight the time is short in which one can still be saved. I know you do not see because you are bothered and rushing about with your everyday worries. But please, I beg you, listen to my remarks at the 12th hour. For God's sake, may each one save his life where there is still time and time is short. I want to say one more thing to you on this day of Tisha B'Av. 1938. Those who will succeed to escape from the catastrophe will merit a moment of great Jewish joy, the rebirth and rise of the Jewish state. I do not know if I will earn it. My son, yes. I believe in this just as I am sure that tomorrow morning the sun will shine once again. I believe in this with total 1938, a year before the Nazi invasion of Poland. And we all know what happened. This speech of Jabotinsky is nothing less than a modern version of Yermio Hanavi, the prophet Jeremiah. Number two. As I've shared with you before, one of my favorite writers living today in Jerusalem is Sarah Tuttle Singer. She's 40 years old. She tells great stories and she writes in a magnificent manner. And she tells lots of stories from taxi drivers that come from her experiences taking taxis in Israel. And here's the story she told. I'm in a taxi. The taxi driver is not from Jerusalem. He is from Rishon Litzion. He smells like cigarettes and aquanaut. He's got spiky great hair and he looks like a hedgehog. He tells me he knows many things. He knows the short coat to Rehovo, like the back of his hand. He knows where the best sushi place is on Rothschild. He knows where to buy the sweetest strawberries at the Ram Shuk. I ask. How do you know so much? He says, I sell real estate. I'm the most famous real estate salesman in all of Risha and Zion. Are you looking to buy? Because it's great in Risha. It's nice. It's calm. Come with me. You should buy in Risha. Sarah says, maybe Sunday I'll buy. But I would want to buy in Jerusalem. Taxi driver shakes his head. 
I don't understand why anyone would want to live in Jerusalem. It's terrible real estate, sweetie, he says to her. No beach in Jerusalem, no sea, just the coattail. Why would anyone want to live in Jerusalem? What the taxi driver doesn't know is that Jerusalem is the sea. And so I tell him everything. I tell him how from the Mount of Olives, the buildings ripple against the sky, up and down the hills. And it is so, so pretty. But underneath is this relentless pounding of strife and hope, hunger and adoration, seizing beneath in seismic shifts. Tyrants and prophets sift through the valleys in wave after wave of sound and light and blood and yearning, and the pounding is relentless. And underneath it all, wave after wave, then the tide shifts suddenly, and entire empires crash down deep into the darkest depths of bone and sinew and precious gold. And then the storm clears, as it always does. And the sunlight glitters off the rooftops once again and the sea is calm, and it is always overflowing. That's what she says to the taxi driver. Taxi driver is quiet for a couple of minutes, and then he turns around and stares at her, like he's really looking into her soul. And he says to her, you're crazy. You are really crazy. You in Jerusalem, you deserve each other. And Sarah writes, it's probably the best compliment I've gotten in a long, long time. My friends, I want to wish you a beautiful day, a joyous Shabbos, and a meaningful Tisha B'Av wrapped and intertwined with the devastation and the triumph of Jewish history and the Jewish people. Thank you very much. Have a great day. I look forward to seeing you soon in person.